My mission is simple, to make you money. I'm here to level the playing field for all investors. There's always a bull market somewhere, and I promise to help you find it. Mad Money starts now. Hey, I'm Kramer. Welcome to Mad Money. Welcome to Kramerica. I'm going to make friends. I'm just trying to make a little money. My job, not just to entertain, educate, put days and weeks like this in context. So call me at 1-800-743-CBC or tweet me at Jim Kramer. The snap judgment fools, well, guess what? They lost again. All the major banks reported earnings this morning, and with the exception of Citigroup, they were initially pummeled. Sell, 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 sell. Sellers panicked out of Bank sell, of America, sell, sell. out of J.P. Sell, Morgan, sell, sell. and they stampeded out of Wells sell, Fargo. Sell, sell. But once their conference calls got going, the stocks all roared higher, in some cases dramatically, especially Kramer fave Wells Fargo, contributing to the broader comeback in the averages, with the Dow only gaining 113 points, S&P advancing 0.4%, and the NASDAQ, the home of all the stuff that was getting crushed, up another 0.71%. This rebound for the banks reminds us that earnings season is a time of incredible treachery. Looks like nobody listened to my Jeremiah's. I love that SAT word. Earlier this week about not jumping the gun. Every quarter I make the same argument about how you should wait and do more work before you pull the trigger. But a lot of people remain unconvinced, and I know why. Because they'd be stupid. Why did these highly important bank stocks turn around after being pummeled at the opening? I'll tell you why. Very simple. Things turned out to be better than expected, and much better than certainly that the bears were thinking. Like I've been saying for ages, the banks are making a ton of money thanks to the Fed rate hikes, even without any capital markets activity. And the loan losses aren't that bad. Once the conference calls happen, anyone who bothered to do even an ounce of a jigger, a jigger of homework, because I used to own a bar, realized that the consumer's alive and well, just slightly a little more cautious, which is exactly what the Fed's aiming for. If we can get less spending, a little more saving, less inflation, out the, utterly wrecking the economy, that's terrific for the stock market, for you and me, for our portfolios, because it means the end of the tightening cycle is in sight. The bias, the ridiculous bias sell, sell, to sell. sell the bank stocks before hearing anything was dead wrong. As has been the case since 2023 got rolling. Will this era of good feelings hold up to next week? Well, then you know what we have to do. We have to go through our game plan to find out. Yes, because this is the heart of earnings season really beginning. Today was kind of just more of a kickoff. On Monday, we have Martin Luther King Day, so the market's closed. Tuesday, full swing, when both Goldman Sachs and Morgan Stanley report. Now, we had a press report preview of a potential weakness at Goldman. They tried to get on this mass consumer banking business. I told them not to, mainly credit cards. That's apparently starting to cost them a lot of money. That said, if Goldman could put up good numbers, and we now know all the negatives because of this story that ran, well, I got to tell you something, it could be just a, it could be rocket fuel. It could rocket higher. It's only selling you 10 times earnings, and these are highly depressed earnings. No way the investment banking business stays bad forever. Eventually, we'll get mergers, although not necessarily with this crew at the FTC. And we'll get IPOs, and that just has to happen because there's so many stacked up. And Goldman will once again, as it did when I worked there, be printing money. Now, even though I am indeed a Goldman alum, I still think the best quarter this time will come from its arch rival, Morgan Stanley. These guys have moved aggressively into the wealth management business, which is much more consistent than traditional investment banking. I expect, I demand a terrific number. Uh, It'll only get better once mergers and IPOs start happening again. But CEO James Corbin is doing an amazing job. And I think you'll see that when Morgan Stanley reports. Next up, it's the airlines again. American was great this week. Delta was subpar. I think United is going to put up some excellent numbers when it reports Tuesday night. Travel is the last bastion of consumer spending. And United's at the heart of world travel, which is booming. How about Wednesday? We're going to hear from J.B. Hunt. I know I usually don't talk about the truckers, but these guys are really huge. And we know that supply chain and trucking has become the linchpin of the whole nation's problem of commerce. We have to be listening to this for any signs of slowing. Now, J.B. Hunt would know ahead of anyone, and I thought they were a little tepid on that last conference call. It, it sounded like things were starting to roll over. 
I say commerce is tough to judge, but let the companies judge, uh, judge it for us. We don't need to rely on the government numbers. These guys know more. J.B. Hunt knows more than the Labor Department and the Commerce Department. The metals, oh, man, they've been going nuts. They're like meme stocks. After years of wandering in the desert, they burst to the scene with huge momentum since the start of 2023. They've become insane stock growers. I got to know more than that. I can't just buy a stock on the base of momentum. And that's why I'm going to listen out co after close. The aluminum company knows if the metals move is merely a squeeze or the real deal with actual demand, especially from China. Now, while this is a big week for earnings, we can't be oblivious to something that's going to be so. I mean, doesn't everybody know this is going to be horrible? Can't they? Do... Yes, that's right. Janet, Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen said, Government going to run out of money. Going to run out of money likely on Thursday, thanks to that dead ceiling standoff that we seem to like to have every few minutes. It's kind of like a really bad, it's like a, the Halloween movie series. I mean, it's a protracted fight between the Republicans and the Democrats in Congress. Something that's a total distraction from business. Even as very much, it very much matters. We don't want the government to run out of money. Hey, let's factor it in by saying these standoffs tend to get resolved, but only after lots of brinksmanship that threatens the stability of the markets and does bring it down, if not attempting to bring down the entire republic. Oh, by the way, it also crushed the defense stocks today, and they will be unsteady until this gets resolved, of which when it does, you want to buy Raytheon Technologies, RTX. We also get housing starts on Thursday, and these numbers are going to be hard to dissect. What do we want? Okay, well, we want a lot of homes to be built because there is indeed a tremendous need for them, but we don't want them to go up in price. We want the home builders to do badly. We want supply to overwhelm demand driving down prices. I think housing has become a major problem for the Fed. The sellers haven't panicked yet enough to get home prices down significantly. But the buyers have gone on strike. Who wins? I think we'll know more when we get this number. But i got to tell you who usually wins, the buyers and the sellers panic and break price. Now, I know Thursday's mostly about Washington, but I'd rather focus on a whole other city, Cincinnati, and not just because I think the Bengals are going to win this weekend, because this is the morning that Procter & Gamble, located in the great city of Cincinnati, reports, and I think it's going to be darn good. Procter was hurt by the insanely strong dollar last time, but now the dollar's insanely weaker. They were trying to push through insane price increases to keep up with the insane raw costs. Since then, the price increases have stuck. But the raw costs have come down. Proctor might be the perfect headwinds to tailwind story. We own it from a chapel trust. I'm liking it. So we're going to be all over it for members of the investment club. Yes, at the morning meeting. And then, of course, around two-ish, the home stretch. Remember FANG, that ridiculous acronym I coined a long time ago that's now irrelevant? Well, there's one of these companies that has officially broken out and has gone into Super Bowl mode. And that is Netflix. Now, which is starting to put up some amazing numbers. The secret? It's the slate. It always was about the movies, wasn't it? Or the series, more importantly. While Netflix got tons of new subscribers during the worst parts of the pandemic, they weren't able to produce new, much new content. Now things have gotten back to normal. Their programming has improved dramatically, and that's causing people to sign up all over the world. I think Netflix could be one of the strongest stories out there for entire, for all of, of 2023. You know, I am a big believer in the oil move. If you agree with me, you'll be riveted by a conference call. These guys run a great conference call, and that's SLB. I know they changed the name. It used to be Schlumberger. Now it's SLB. Okay, it's the same company. Right? This oil service team is so rigorous and honest that when things were bad, they told you. I mean, most people, when things are bad, they do like what Disney did, tell you about some movie they liked. Right now, though, these guys are doing incredibly well. SLB will tell us where the new finds are. They will play with an open hand. I bet you they give you a little up, uh, update on Russia, too. Prep yourself for next week. It's one of the two busiest weeks of earnings season, but it's not. Well, you know, when actually there's a third. There's three really big weeks, but this one really does start everything that makes it so that we're going to be up late at night studying these stories. Bottom line, we told club members the fantastic breadth of this market has us believing that things are a little better than we thought by this time. And the intraday losses like we had with the banks that turned into buys, not sells, were darn good. But if we get too much speculation, which we'll talk about in a moment, that could hurt us. What a difference a year makes. Then again, last year was so bad that as we annualize those numbers, we'll have a reason to stay bullish and do some buying. Because if the banks are any indication, the negativity just doesn't jive with the reality. And that's a very positive scenario for the bulls. Bye, bye, bye. Indeed. Let's go to Hunter. Hunter? In Maryland. Hunter. 
Hey, Jim, I wanted to give a booyah to you from Mr. Marx's business class, and the stock I'm wondering about is Raytheon Technology Corp. Mr. Marx's business class is rocking. I'm going to give you booyah right back at you. All right. RTX got caught up in the overall what I regard as being budget crisis. When meantime, they've got unbelievable aerospace. Greg Hayes is doing a great job, and I think it is a buy-by-buy. And I'd buy it, but I would not buy it till Thursday when we get that budget budget ceiling. And then Mr. Marx's class should buy pool together, kind of like a lottery ticket, and buy 100 shares. Okay, now we have to remember that last year was bad. Hey, hey, really hard. So as we annualize those numbers, we have a little bit more reason to stay bullish. And we certainly had to like the action today. On Mad Money Tonight, you called in and stumped me on Matter, M-A-T-I-V. What a, what a name. So tonight I'm turning in my homework on the performance materials company that you've never heard of to see if it could have any material impact on your portfolio. Then the meme mania is back in Bed Bath & Beyond and Carvana. And if you're catching fire this year, could this be a red flag? Oh, who the heck knows? But I will tell you this, it is one dangerous game. And does your portfolio have what it takes to handle whatever the market throws at it? Tonight we're playing M I Diversify. See if your top holdings can pass the test. So stay with Kramer. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at cnbc.com or give us a call at 1-800-743-CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.